Okay, hey guys, and welcome back to the second day of building an 8-bit computer in Minecraft. Yesterday, we built the arithmetic unit uh, as an adder-subtractor circuit, which I'm flying around here, and we briefly tested it. Today, we're going to be looking at registers. So just to recap some of what we looked at in the uh, design videos today, we were looking at uh, latch memory and we saw that using this pattern of NOR gates that actually form a little loop we can create an SR latch or sometimes we call it an RS latch it doesn't really matter much so that's a set reset latch as ever if you have questions do ask them in in the comments or uh, yeah just um, message in the live chat I'll try and respond as best I can um, so what we saw today was that the set reset latch has two inputs, uh, one of them for set, one of them for reset, and we can switch one or the other on and it will change the state of our circuit. And because uh, this forms a little loop, it holds that state, so it's a bistable circuit. Um, so when we turn this on, it forces this torch off, uh, which means that this power is off, so this torch can stay on and so this block still gets powered, thus holding that torch off, and so on in a, little, in a little loop. And then when we do it the other way, it flips the circuit around, it forces it into the other state. And on the output, we have a Q and a not Q, uh, and they're always just the opposite of each other. And it doesn't really matter which one we use, uh, which one we call Q and which one we call Q bar, um, just as long as we're, we know which one we're using. So that gives us our, our little latch, um, but that's not really good enough um, because we need to be able to uh, store stuff on the change of the clock, not just uh, when we flip some switches. So uh, one thing to know that we noticed was that set and reset are always opposites. So we can start by looking at how we do that. And uh, so, whoops. Uh, it would help if I actually did this the right way around, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, so they're always opposites and, uh, oh yeah, we need to kind of diode that. So now this is essentially reflecting the input state, right? So they're always opposites except sometimes they're both off. Uh, and when they're both off, that just won't change the data in there. So to do that, we use an AND gate, or actually we use two AND gates. Um, and we can kind of play a trick here, because we saw how to build an AND gate before as this kind of pattern, but it doesn't really matter the, what the position of these NOR gates is, uh, so long as we're using them somewhere in the right order, uh, it doesn't matter. So we can actually build this with the clock coming in the middle and the two kind of data signals coming in in the sides into this. And in fact, we can build this up and over uh, the middle like this, hopefully, um, if I get the positioning right. And oh, that's not quite going to work because I've forgotten to. Oh, uh, yeah. So so what we need is a repeater in in here to stop this kind of wire linking up, and then we can power this block over here. And what we're actually going to do is invert one side, right? Because one side is the data and the other side is, is not the data. Uh, this is going to oscillate for a minute because it's all a bit confused about the state of the circuit. And then we need the same trick on this side, uh, just for a moment. Um, Uh, 
and then we'll just stick a lever here for our data and a lever here for our clock. And obviously this is kind of the inversion of the clock. Um, oh, that's interesting. Why is that? Oh, because it's powering the block rather than what I want it to do. Whoops. Okay, my repeater was powering the block, which caused the power to pass through onto the thing, which isn't what I wanted. What I actually wanted to do was break the the circuit there. Um, so if we do it this way, hopefully we'll get a kind of sensible result. <laughs> okay, so this, this should work now. Um, so we've got the clock in the middle and the data here, and we can switch the data on and off and uh, hopefully, hmm. oh yeah, this is the inversion of the clock. So when the clock is inverted, so because it's inverted here, true uh, on means false and off means true. So when the clock is false, then the AND gates do nothing. And so the, the data in our latch doesn't change. And then when the clock is off, which means true, then one or other of the set and reset signals here, down here in these AND gates is going to be on. And so the data will change inside the latch. So that's okay, it's changing based on the level of the clock, uh, but we don't really want that. We want it so that um, it changes on the transition of the clock from low to high or high to low. Uh, and so we build two of these in a row on opposite levels. Uh, and that way, as we saw in the video, it it holds that kind of value uh, and only takes a new one when the edge changes. So I'm not going to build that whole thing out in full because uh, you've seen the, the kind of design in the video. Um, I'm just going to show you today how we can build the more compact version of all of this uh, and how we're going to link that up to our, to our arithmetic unit over there. Um, and before I do that, I've got to destroy this kind of little demo circuit that we had, uh, that we copied around, because it's going to be in the way of where we want our registers. So the other thing we looked at in the design videos today uh, was uh, multiplexes and things. So actually, maybe we didn't, did we look at that today? I can't remember. I'm going to do it in today's live stream anyway. Uh, it might be in a later video though. Um, and that will basically allow us to link the wiring uh, from the registers to the arithmetic unit. So we're going to have, I haven't actually explained in the design videos yet how many registers we're going to have. Today we're just going to build uh, one or two of them um, and then we're going to see uh, roughly how to link them up um, and then we'll go from there. So these are our a inputs on the bottom and B inputs on the top. And to start with, we just want to kind of drag out our A inputs so that we can figure out where these registers are going to go in our computer, because I've not really planned out the space for this whole computer yet. Um, I just know that it should roughly fit in the area I want it to. So what I'm doing here is just building some kind of blocks to represent where I think I'm going to run the wires uh, for this uh, system. And I know that I'm going to have uh, the kind of B bus above it, and I want those all to be in parallel. So I don't want to kind of shortcut underneath here with the A register, because that would just mess up the, the kind of neat a symmetry of the design, which we're going to make use of. So all these wires are going to come around a corner here so that we can get them across in front of the four registers we're going to build. Um, oops. So you can see how all of these just bend a corner. Um, 
we'll figure out the repeaters later to make sure the power gets everywhere it needs to go. And our redstone is going to sit on top of these blocks, essentially. Okay, um, so that's kind of our starting point. And I happen to know that we're going to need to gradually lift these up a little bit. Uh, so we need to have enough space underneath them to have power running into a block and a torch on top of that block powering the wire. So that, that's what we're going to need in a minute. So I'm just going to step these up uh, to give us enough space to do that. Okay, so uh, now that we've stepped all of those up nicely, I'm just going to delete the blocks in between so that this is easier to kind of fly around later if we need to fly down one of the wires and see if something's going wrong. And now we just need enough space for our first register. So as I say, this isn't going to be a fast Minecraft CPU. This is super wasteful on space, uh, potentially but at least it will hopefully work first time, <laughs> if we're lucky. Um, okay, so that's our start, and then we have to keep the order of all these bits the same, uh, otherwise things are going to get really confusing, so the right-hand end is always going to be linked up in the same way. Um, so. For each of these wires, we're going to be selecting uh, a bit to send down it. And so that's what these blocks are going to represent. They're going to represent where the kind of selection happens. Leave the right spacing in between them also. There should be a one row spacing between everything. Um, yeah. And then these just need extending to reach out over the top of those. Okay, these, these can kind of, well, they need extending because otherwise we're going to accidentally build into the way of their path, uh, which we don't want to do. So that's kind of the starting point that gives us the alignment for where our data flip-flops are going to be and now I'm going to try and show you how we build those data flip-flops. Um, so uh, I can't do everything from memory so I'm just going to pull up uh, a little image of uh, that I took earlier, a quick screenshot earlier of the thing but I now can't find it. <laughs> Oh dear, where have I put it? No, nope, I can't find it. Oh dear. Um. Huh. This is frustrating, guys. I've lost where it's put these screenshots. Ah, there we go. I found it now. Cool. Uh, <laughs> NVIDIA put it under desktop rather than under Minecraft for some reason. Um, bit strange. Never mind. So. So we'll build our first one and then we'll just build them across um, as well. Um, but as with the arithmetic unit, we're going to try and build kind of a golden copy over here and then we'll copy it into place. Um, so the way this works is 
we have, well, uh, I'm going to have to build this backwards from what I did in my kind of test uh, scenario. Um, which is going to get a bit tricky, but never mind. Um, so this is where our output's going to be. And before that, we're going to have two data latches. Now, again, this isn't entirely my own design. Um, the main core of this is a data latch uh, that someone else designed. Uh, it's, it's someone else's kind of thing on Gamepedia, um, but it's a super compact design that works really well. So I'm just going to go ahead uh, and use it. And if anyone knows the original builder for it, then they can link in the comments, uh, which will be awesome. Um, I'll also put the link in, in the comments to where the to where this design comes from, uh, so you guys can go look it up. I'll, I'll do that after the stream ends this time. Um, so yeah, we can see here that we've got the same pattern twice, and we're going to fill this in with redstone and, re and torches and things in a minute. But these, this will be our first latch, and this will be our second latch. Uh, the data comes in and out on these kind of upper level bits, and the clock comes in at these level comes in at these lower sections here and uh, yeah those clocks will be you know they'll be on opposite opposite levels um, so it acts as a flip-flop um, interestingly gamepedia actually has uh, the kind of messaging as to what's a latch and what's a flip-flop completely wrong it calls just one of these on its own a data flip-flop which it's not it's just a data latch um, so you actually have to have the, the the two of them in a row to make it a proper flip-flop uh, and not just a latch. So this is where our data is going to come in and we're actually going to invert the data first uh, so that the memory will store or this register will actually store the, the opposite of its original input but that's going to be useful when we come to the output because we're going to want to invert the output as part of our selection process for what to send to the arithmetic unit so it doesn't really matter it's going to save us uh, a gate on the output and it's also going to help us with this up here this extra block i've put in which you won't find on gamepedia this is going to act as our one part of our clear signal uh, so the way this is going to work is we're going to have a signal that allows us to clear the registers and that will set both the clocks and this uh, signal, not an AND gate, sorry, just it will settle three. Um, and that will cause the whole register to clear itself out. So then everything will be zero and it will be really easy to know what state the system's in. So, and again, this is an asynchronous clear signal. It doesn't uh, wait for the clocked edge to come around and that's not always the case quite often we will see in electronic design um, synchronous reset signals for performance and energy efficiency and all sorts of other uh, reasons why we might do that okay so there's our data input uh, this is going to be our clear signal coming in And down here, we're going to have the clock signals, clock levels coming in. And just so we can see how this works for a second, I'm going to link all of this stuff up uh, in a kind of temporary way. Um, but we don't need this, this. We will build some extra circuitry in a moment to control this properly. Um, so if I stick a lamp on the output, we can see how this works. So at the moment, the data going in is zero, and we can see that it's storing is zero. There is a bit of a weird glitch that comes through. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter um, as long as it kind of stabilizes. Oh, and then I need to switch off. So the clear signal again this is inverted logic so on means uh, false and off means true and that's just because of the way this torch is going to work and that's uh, just making it easier for us to 
pass that signal through. And then of course we remember that this is actually the inverted output, right? So if we want this to be uh, lamp to be accurate, then we have to invert the output because we inverted the data input, so we invert the data output and we'll, then we'll see the same thing on both input and output. So now if I switch the data off, we see that nothing happens. I can toggle this as many times as I like um, until the clock edge comes. Did I mess this up? Ah, I messed this up. Forgot to actually link up the wires. Hmm. Why is this not working properly? That's off. Ah, I've missed a bit of wire. <laughs> See, this is why we test on just one bit first, because uh, this bit's out. Okay, so that's fine, and then we can toggle the data input, and we can see that it saves when the clock changes just once on the negative edge there. And if I leave it off and toggle the data, you can see it doesn't matter what state whether the clock is high or low, it's not until that edge comes around that it's going to update. And in this case, it's the negative edge. Because uh, we can see even there the clock went from on to off and it saved it. And actually, if we just want to produce the other edge, uh, if we want to make it change on the positive edge, we should be able to just flip this around so that instead of inverting that way, we're inverting this way. Um, and now if I switch the data, we should see, yeah, so now it's positive edge because we went from the clock went from low to high and so it's saved on the positive edge. Okay, so we have our first uh, data flip-flop and I'm going to delete these couple of extraneous uh, bits and pieces from the outside that we don't want. But I'm going to leave these connecting wires just here. Okay, so now we've got to do the copy coordinates thing again. Um, but what I want to do is copy it so that the alignment matches this block just here, right? So when I copy across over there, I can just stand exactly where I want the output uh, and that's where the output will be. So uh, let me pull up Notepad and then I can write down the coordinates. So we're copying from 144.33.109 and we need to know the kind of extent of where we're going to. So that's going to be out here and one block up at least so that we cover the redstone on top. And so if I take these coordinates of 125.38.110 and now we need to know where we're copying to, and I really hope this works the way I intend it to. I want the output to be right in front of me just here. So we're going to clone from, oh, and as before, I need to write down the coordinates that I'm standing at to make this work. So 154.33.62. So we're going to clone from 144.33.109. To one two five thirty eight one ten and destination one five four thirty three sixty two and we'll see whether that works. It didn't work. It didn't work because Minecraft has decided to invert the order in which I'd supplied the inputs and obliterate everything that was behind me rather than the stuff in front of me. That's really frustrating Minecraft. <laughs> like preserve the orientation of the coordinates, surely. Maybe not. Evidently that's just not how this works. Okay, so now I need to rebuild Let me 
many clicks. We need to rebuild that and we can try this again. So, <laughs> if we go from here, uh, so the kind of distance on our thing originally was uh, 144 to 125, which is uh, 19 blocks. And we're standing at 154. So if we go 19 blocks in front of us, essentially, uh, then we should end up in the right place. I think. Nope, that wasn't 19, because it should have been 34. <laughs> I can't maths on the fly. <laughs> Too distracted with trying to manage um, what YouTube is telling me at the same time. Uh. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we can keep trying this until it works. <laughs> There we go, that's more like it. Cool, and now we have space to step down as well. Uh, and we see that we've also picked up that and we've picked up the right height and, oh, I forgot to destroy my marker block. Um, that's okay, the, having the marker block there is not too bad. Um, okay, so that's our first, uh, first data flip-flop of our first register. And now we just need to gradually move it across sideways uh, until we get to the right point. So again, if I move sideways in the game, we can see that we're going from 62 down to two blocks across 60. Okay, so that's the second bit. And then we're just gonna do that third bit and fourth bit bit, bit one, two, six bit, two more. Okay, perfect. So there's our uh, eight bits of our first register. Um, now the problem is, have I done this wrong? I don't know. I don't think I have. No, this this should be this should be okay. Um, so I have to be able to link up these bits with these blocks down here. That's what these connections are going to be. But the thing we have to bear in mind is that we've got that B, this B uh, bus above it, right? So. This is going to step up and over. And then again, it also needs space to be able to accept uh, stuff above this. So we have to have space to do a torch on a block and something above that. So we actually need to be much higher up. So if we look, we need to be at that height. And that's okay. We can do that. I'm going to leave that there now for a marker. So later on, we'll, we'll drag that B register around the corner uh, and connect this all up. But for now, this is just going to sit there. And each of these is going to be our kind of power signal to the rail above it. And we'll see in a later video how this allows us to select the outputs of the registers. Or, or you can take a guess. <laughs> so yeah, um, so 
So by offsetting these, we can raise up these signals uh, to get them up to the level needed for uh, these signals here. So um, basically when we do this, um, these signals aren't going to interfere with each other. Um, or they wouldn't if I'd put the connections in the right place at the right height because uh, this has to go into the side of this block. Uh, did I start this the wrong way around? I can't remember. Okay, so uh, I've started the offset wrong here somehow. Let me check what I did in my kind of sketch out of this design before. I may have started this off in the wrong alternation, but I can't remember. Oh, I see. Okay, so I just have to offset this sideways one and it will work. Hopefully. Yeah, there we go. That, that'll work. Uh, so this will come across one block. Cool. Um, so now we need to do the same for each of these outputs here. Um, maybe I should have left more of a gap up to this one so that these lines can come across. I think I should have left them one bigger gap so that this torch is one block higher. <laughs> this is designing on the fly. I'm not used to doing. Normally I plan everything out in crazy detail before I start any video. <laughs> um, this is a bit different. Uh, doing stuff completely from, from scratch. Cool. So now we can bring this across and do this one's wire and then we can see that by placing a block above here, we break any connection with the block next to it, so it's not going to spill across. It just breaks that link. And then we can lift this up. All right, so that's our first uh, register, and I'm just going to fill in all of the wires and torches and everything else uh, that we'll see in a later video why all of this works the way it does. But for now, because I want to be able to copy this stuff for the other registers, I'm just going to link all this up and then figure out all the repeaters that are needed.
So each flip-flop is two blocks wide and we're doing an 8-bit machine. So that means we have 16 blocks uh, across. Almost exactly. Uh, should be. But then we have some padding on either side. So there's a bit of a little bit of extra space. Um, so there will be repeaters needed to link all of this stuff together uh, later on. Now I can just fly down these wires. This is why it's useful to make gaps in between because there's not enough headroom to fly up and down always. I'm doing it in this direction rather than like building the redstone backwards so that I can see when these repeaters are needed. Uh, so these last two bits are going to need repeaters uh, just to get the power far enough to reach the block at the other end. And then here we're going to kind of assume the worst uh, and create our control input to this set of wires here and we'll see which of these runs out of power uh, be the last three seems yep and then we have to do the same for all of these blocks above the other thing i haven't built yet that i'll do in a moment is the clear and clock control circuitry uh, on the other side of these registers. And we'll see in episode 8, which is coming in a few days' time, uh, exactly how all of this plays into a bigger processor design and why we do it this way. Um, you know, why, why do we have these components in this structure? and not any other kind of structure. Um, although there's lots of different designs of processor in the world, lots of different ways of doing this stuff. I build this the wrong way around? No, I didn't. It's okay. I just forgot to forgot to place the extra block um, for the section. So.
Right, so that's most of the output circuitry for our first register. Um, oh, I should fill in these end blocks as well. And now I'm going to try and build the uh, clock control and the clear control circuitry uh, for these uh, flip-flops. So I know that in here somewhere is going to be needed uh, a repeat is going to be needed. So I'm going to choose this row um, just to put in the delays, uh, put in the repeaters. And then from here, we can build the clear control circuitry. Uh, and again, I'm going to look at uh, a kind of mock up I made. See whether I can get this right. <laughs> without too much faff. Oh, no. This is going to be our clear signal that will go to the entire system. So it will run all the way across um, all of the registers and all of the memory, well, potentially all of the some of the memory. This isn't a latch, this is just a kind of compact way that I'm building the AND gates around here for the clock circuitry. And it's important, um, you probably won't, this won't be very intuitive, but this has to be one tick and this has to be two ticks to make the delays work properly. Um, otherwise the clear signal doesn't actually function for these because uh, when the clear signal is running, we're actually setting both uh, latches at once, both parts of the flip-flop at once, which is a bit um, dangerous. <laughs> like if you get the timing wrong, then they one releases after the other or something. Um, something silly. So this is going to be our clock signal and this is going to be our enable signal um, for the whole system.
Okay, so now I should be able to test whether all of these so we enable and stop the clock. And yep, yeah, all of those have switched off, which means they all saved the right data. And then if I do it one more time, we should see them flip back on the negative edge in this case. Yep. Okay, and then the last thing to do is to switch them all on and see whether the clear signal works properly. So all them on, negative edge of the clock sets all the, all the bits. Uh, in this case, the outputs are inverted, so that means they're all actually on. And then we can toggle the clear and we see that everything's stable and the outputs are all cleared. And then we'll do it on the other edge of the clock. So negative edge, set all the bits and then leave the clock in the opposite state and then set the clear signal. And if there was a timing problem, we'd see all of these uh, latches oscillating or doing something a bit weird, uh, but we don't. So that's all working properly. Perfect. So that's our first register. And now all we need to do is copy it four times uh, and copy it so that we don't uh, accidentally destroy parts of our other circuit, which means we need to copy from this row and then we'll just build the, the kind of extra circuitry on the side manually. Um, Or, you know what, I'm not sure. I think we can probably do it from here. Um, and destroy the bits we don't need later. So, 31, 19 blocks across, so I'm going to try and do 20. Oh. That looks right. So Hopefully these blocks get destroyed and we don't accidentally destroy anything we've already built. Uh, let's find out. from where I intended. How did that happen? Oh, because I didn't stand on the same line. How many was I off by? One. Three. Can't tell. I 
I need to go one block further to make this work. Now I'm going to go and place the repeaters to make all of this power actually transmit far enough. Place it in the wrong place.
I might be able to optimize the time timing later, but this will now allow me to copy uh, this kind of second register uh, across to create the other, uh, to create the third and fourth registers. Um, so Oh, uh, actually, maybe I didn't mean that. What did, what did I mean to do? Uh, so this this is 19, and uh, we're copying from, trying to copy from this block here, basically. Um, oh, but I need the lower coordinate because of the way Minecraft orders everything. Very frustrating. So. Um, yeah, so we're trying to co copy from 27 and we want 19 blocks. And then we need to go, we need to go uh, 20, 21 blocks over. Um, try 21 blocks over first. Uh, oh, but I want to go two lots over because I know that for this register we're going to need some extra space. So we're going to go 42 blocks over, I think. Uh, will that leave us enough space for what we need? Might do. This is four. This is twenty six. That's twenty two block space. That should be enough. And then we'll go to minus thirty five. Nope, that is in the wrong place. Minus thirty six. And destroy the random extra blocks we created in the process. Where I created in the process. Whoops. Okay, so that's our first four registers. We haven't linked up the clock signals yet, which I'm going to do uh, later down the road when we get that far. Um, and I also need to link up these clear and uh, these buses, these sets of wires. So in computing we call uh, groups of wires like this buses. Um, so these are data buses because they're carrying data. Um, a single wire we would just call a signal, we wouldn't call it a bus um, normally. We call it clock signal data bus. Um, sometimes we have control buses as well. What's interesting about a general purpose processor though is that there has to be some crossover between uh, data and control. So you have to be able to use data to make different controls and you also have to use controls to make different data. Uh, so what's a control bus and what's a data bus um, gets blurred in some places. 
uh, whereas in other designs and standard finite state machines and things like that, there tends to be quite a clear distinction between control bus and data bus. So the gap in the middle here is just because the third register, as we'll see in a future design episode, is going to be for the program counter, and for that we're going to need uh, some more complex wiring to control its input.
Okay, so we're almost done today. Uh, I'm just going to test that each of these registers is working as I intended. So I'm going to start by clearing all of them. And then we're going to go one by one, uh, starting from the far end, and check that when we set the registers, all of the data passes down both, uh, both of the A and B buses. So that means setting all the data, uh, setting all the values, and uh, these are supposed to be inverted, so... Oh, I've left the <laughs> uh, I left the clear signal. I've left the clear signal in the wrong state. I need to go back. Okay, so the outputs are inverted logic, which means that off is true, and our inputs here are on, true, uh, so that's correct, and then we can select this register as being the one to output to our data lines, um, and we can see that the power hopefully reaches all the way to the end, and then we just do need to do this for each of the four registers uh, to check that every single bit is operating correctly. So that works. Ah, so the power up top, I've forgotten to do somewhere. And then we can see that this, this gap is really small, so this number, this number of repeaters just isn't necessary. Okay, that works. So now we deselect that register, and then we go and set the bits in the next register, and so on and so forth. We gradually move our way along. So power is off to all of those, and then we select this register, and then we're going to write to it, and then we should see these are all powered except for this one. So this one's somehow broken. Uh, I'm wrong. Broken because this torch is directly over a repeater. So I've misaligned it. Um, so we pull that back one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks to the next one. So that's okay. We can pull that back one one block. Okay, so all of these should now be powered at the end. All of them powered and then hopefully, yep, all of our B inputs are powered and then we can move to the next register. So we deselect this register Select this one on both buses. Initially, everything should be off because we've cleared all the registers. So now we just have to set all the data. Again, this repeat is off. It's probably because there's a repeater on top of the block we intended. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we can pull this back because our maximum is sixteen. So we can pull this back one position. Uh, if I quickly destroy this and create this, we can see the power reaches the next repeater, so that's okay. I did count correctly. Okay, so now all of these are powered and all of our B register signals are working. So we've got one more register left to test, which is the first one we created, so Hopefully we've not broken anything. 
Again, that's all unpowered. And toggle clock. And we've broken one signal here. So I know that I can pull this back one because our next line of repeaters is going to be down here. And then we're going to do for this, the same for the B up here. And that's all working. So all of our registers are working. That's it for today, guys. That's, uh, I'm just going to finish off this stream by connecting up these wires here uh, and destroying the kind of input switches that we had. But that's all I have for you for the main build. Uh, we now have four registers and all of our uh, kind of data lines to them working. Uh, we'll see in a future design video why these data lines work the way they do. Um, as ever, if you've got any questions, any comments, or if you're watching this after the live stream ends, again, just comment on the video uh, and I'll try to answer any questions you have. Thanks for watching, guys.